Jeffree Star is back. He made a video and he is back on YouTube and we're gonna be talking all about it. So you already know, I have to get my Jigglypuff lipstick. Yes, it is a special occasion. Yeah, you know Jigglypuff had lipsticks, girl? Yes, ma'am, here it is right here. Oh, my lucky lipstick, guys. Look how beautiful it is. Oh, I love it so much. Okay, hold on, just a little bit. All right, so let's talk about um, Jeffree Star coming back. So he teased that he was gonna be coming back to YouTube. Here's a little teaser he made. You didn't know, tomorrow! I'm uploading a brand new YouTube video. Yes, a brand new YouTube video for the first time in 10 months. It is going to be iconic. I have a very special announcement and celebration. Um, and the commencement starts tomorrow morning. And one last Jig Star setting powder from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. This has been gone. And then he's back. He dropped the video and I want to do a reaction. I want to watch it together and give my full commentary because I have a lot to say about it. Also, I want Shane Dawson to come back. Like I was talking to another uh, drama channel and I was saying like, <sighs> Shane Dawson seriously needs to just, I hope he watches this, but Shane Dawson, I would love, love, love. If Shane Dawson went back and interviewed, I don't know, Eugenia Cooney, Graveyard Girl, like where are they now? You interview with Nikocado Avocado, Ethan Klein, and just like do interviews like that or just do like little documentaries. Like I would love to see that. Oh, by the way, on my other video, I totally messed up. I wanted to talk about, oh, my light's going off. Hold on, girl. I wanted to talk about how this $30 night cream is super bougie. It's almost like the $200 ones at Saks Fifth Avenue. So if you want a really good night cream, not sponsored, although I should be, this L'Oreal Paris Midnight Cream, and look, done, I've emptied it, I'll use it. I get this, just put it all over my face. At night, I wake up, my skin, my skin, my skin, my skin feels amazing, but it is comparable to like those rich bitch $200 night creams at the bougie stores. Believe me, I know, it's, it just feels like that. So $200, don't spend it, $30 right here. I'll link it down below in the YouTube shop. I'm not trying to sell ya, I'm trying to tell ya. Something about this L'Oreal Paris Midnight Cream slaps. It, it really gives rich bitch, like, trust me. Okay, anyways, let's look at Jeffree Star's newest video. So grab a snack and come on back and let's go. All right, guys, I am in the middle of a move. I am moving uh, to a new studio and I was like, let's check out the Jeffree Star video. So here it is. So here, let's get some reaction. Hello, is this thing on? What's up, everybody? What's back? Okay, I'm gonna pause it. He looks good. He looks good. He's glowing. People were saying that Jeffree Star gained a little weight. He had, I think he confirmed he gained about 10 pounds. Um, you can see in his face, and he said he likes it. So he said we need to get over it. I like it. He looks good. The hair looks good. I want, I want the hair to be more fuller at the top. Um, but other than that, he looks good. Skin looking good. He's in his custom suits, custom pink signature logos and everything. Like, when I think of Jeffree Star, I think of this. I think of him holding the Jeffree Star mirror, the star mirror, pink suits, pink hair, pink makeup. Like, I think of pink, and I think he nailed it right here. Here we go. Hi, channel! Hi, how are ya? Yes, you guys, I'm back! Miss Jeffrey Lynn, we are officially back on YouTube, and... We have a lot to catch up on, so grab a Red Bull, grab a snack, and hi, how are ya? It's been about 10 months since I've uploaded on my channel, I know. A lot of you felt like I abandoned you, I am so sorry, I apologize. I'm back! Now, we took a very long hiatus after almost 10 years of beauty and lifestyle content. Big Mama, I needed a break. Um, um he, I mean, I, I like that he apologized for abandoning his 16 million followers, and you know, I've always thought that it was just a mistake for him to leave YouTube. Yeah, granted, maybe he felt like the views weren't there for him anymore like they used to, but there was still an audience here. And so he was using YouTube to promote his launches, and that's how some people knew about it, which is great. I just don't think it was the right thing for him to do is to abandon YouTube and then go full throttle on TikTok. 
So I'm glad he's back. I'm really happy about that. Here we go. Because from a business standpoint, hey, upload on YouTube like once a month or something, you know, like to be in the algorithm, to be in the know. There's a whole audience over here. That type vibe. Here we go. As you know, we have left LA about four years ago now. I know. Where has the time gone? Four years ago, we moved to Wyoming. We've been living on a big old ranch. I'm a real cowboy now. I know that's kind of hard to believe, but baby, we're makeup moguling and we're yak ranching. And yesterday, I opened up my second ever retail store. So now we have two. This is so crazy. So there's a lot to catch up on in my life. But most importantly today, we are here to do a little, a little documentary style content. I miss long form content. Yes. Oh. Oh, okay. He misses long form content. Okay. Oh, I'm the queen of TikTok now, and I'm having a lot of fun over there. And I really missed you guys. Literally, almost a third of my life was spent on YouTube. So we are officially diving in, and today is going to be monumental. Life has been amazing out in Wyoming. I truly can't complain. It's been a very wild roller coaster. And we at Jeffree Star Cosmetics have had a astounding astounding run and i cannot believe i'm about to say this but in november it's my 10th anniversary as a company so as we're looking at dates and things to celebrate i stumbled across something oh girl i know a lot of you know and have seen uh, music music because he has been working on new music you know, yeah, he has new merch, new makeup coming out. And the late, the title of this video is Beauty Killer 15th Anniversary Album and Makeup Reveal. Before, if you have no idea what I'm holding, yes, this is a CD, first of all. <laughs> Some of y'all are like, what the hell is this? Yes, back in my day, we played CDs to listen to music. This is my first and one and only full-length album. It is called a Beauty Killer. It came out. 15 years ago! So we are here to dive into, yes, almost like a VH1 behind the music moment to celebrate and acknowledge 15 years. And then of course, it's time to drop the bomb, baby. We are here to celebrate it. We have a re-release CD coming out. We have new vinyl and I have three songs coming out. Oh my God! There's a lot of reflecting that is going to be happening and we're going to throw up a lot of really old clips. We dove through the archives, baby. So yes, I am doing a re-release of Beauty Killer, the 15th anniversary. It is going to be coming out very soon. And yes, everything will be launching on September 20th. It's happening. I can't believe it. Now... When I started my makeup brand, I fully abandoned music. I really did. I said goodbye to the past. I said sayonara. I did my last tour in a tour bus with a band playing shows in front of thousands of people in 2012. I was signed. Oh, my God. Those touring days really, like, <sighs> those touring days were fun for Jeffrey back in the day. And it's how he really got his name out there. And he used MySpace as a catalyst to promote music and ultimately ended up in like Hot Topic and merch. Akon, the award winning, of course, Grammy nominated singer songwriter. He is unreal. And back then I was signed to him. Yes, I was one of his artists. It was a really wild journey, but we're going to go back way deeper. But when I quit music, I fully immersed myself with Jeffree Star Cosmetics. And now that we have 10 years in the game in the beauty industry, I felt like it was very appropriate to celebrate one of my greatest accomplishments as a musician. And it's time to do our big one, re-release this, give all the OGs something to celebrate. What? They're gonna re-release? Well, the new people, some fun to listen to. So we're gonna go on a little journey right now. And then at the end of this journey, you guys are going to see what we have been working on for a really long time. We're Guys, I want a music video. I thought we were going to get some new music with the music video. We're going to get a new merch, new makeup, new vlog, all in one. My expectations were very high. Give you some song sneak peeks. We're going to okay. show you the new cover of Beauty Killer. Because 15 years later, you can't use the same album cover. At least when you're not <laughs> someone as iconic as me. So there is a brand new album cover, three new songs, and it is about to be really fabulous so let's go on a little journey let's rewind our memories because as i'm sitting here all the memories are flooding in and a lot of you know the history but for those of you that don't let's take you down a little walk now in 2005 if y'all can even picture it that long ago little old jeffrey lynn had a blonde mohawk 
I was a very androgynous, and mm-hmm. there really was not a guy mm-hmm. makeup at the time. Everyone else was doing their own thing. Boy George, Marilyn Manson, David Bowie, they were off, retired, or on a hiatus, or not really in the forefront. And Miss Jeffree Star came in that MySpace scene like a wrecking ball. I remember that picture. That picture haunts me. Because I was like, where did he get that Chanel bag? Whose pool is he is he at? Wow, he's like this rich kid living in L.A. Like it, All these thoughts were in my head, you know? When this picture evoked so much emotion. And I met some... That one, too. That was a really... Like, I wonder who took that picture, you know? That was a really good one. ...off of MySpace, and they happened to start a group called Hollywood Undead. Now, they would go on to sell millions of records, tour the world, and they are still an active group right now. Before they put out any music officially on a label, I was in the mix. Now, what got me into music? From a very young age, I listened to an eclectic realm. I used to have Marilyn Manson and the Spice Girls and Mariah Carey, Britney Spears, the Backstreet Boys, and... Corn, the biscuit. I mean, it was all a blend of all my favorite music. I was very eclectic. I was also obsessed with female rap. Now, my and the Spice Girls, especially with female rap, is going to be very important because it really inspired me to want to rap as well. Yes. Oh yeah. Apparently, he's dropping a rap song, and I can't wait for that. And I think Black China is in it. Every Lynn Star can really lay down a freestyle. I love writing raps, and I love that whole hip-hop culture. I've always loved it. So pop and hip-hop together was always my favorite. Now, I really grew up listening to Little Kim, Foxy Brown, Remy Ma, Queen Latifah. I loved female rappers. On MySpace one day, I was clicking around, and I met these dudes. They were called Hollywood and Dead. We met at their apartment. They played me some music that they were playing, and it was really funny, really catchy, very rappy. I proposed to them one day, maybe I can be like the female rapper in your group feature on a few songs whatever right so one day on a very boring day in los angeles when we were all broke and doing absolutely nothing we wrote a song called turn off the lights yes i wrote my oh my god i've never seen this photo before <clears throat> that's a lot of people for a group let me see one two three four five six seven eight nine and you got to split that money nine ways. That's a lot of splitting. They probably made like no money if they did make money. Because you got to break it down and split it so many ways. Very first rap verse, I featured on my very first song, and it came out in 2005. Now, this song was very monumental for that group. Hollywood and Dead was writing very catchy stuff, and it just snowballed, and it really blew up. I finally had the confidence to be an artist. I couldn't believe it. So living in Los Angeles, you can network and you can hustle and you somehow... Smartpunk.com. Whatever happened to that? And that was a smart punk stage. Let me see if that website even exists or if it's like down. Smartpunk.com. I often wonder about when I see... Yeah, look, welcome to the family. Smart Punk Records. Record label, smart punk shop. It's still up. It still exists. It's still a thing. Meet the right people, whether it's at the right or the wrong time, and a bunch of musicians and people just kept falling into my life. And all of a sudden, months later, this Hollywood Undead track has blown up. They've blown up. They're massive. They signed to Interscope Records. Now, back then, they did have me re record my verse. I was in the studio, and they sadly never used it on their debut album. But that's okay, because most of you will never forget my verse. Now, let's fast forward to 2006 and seven. I was one of the biggest names on MySpace.com. It was the epitome of social media back then. It is what TikTok is back then. It was absolutely... I wonder why they never used it, though. You know, I can never... I, like, what's the reason as to why they basically didn't use his track? I want a documentary about that. Insane. I got a lot of attention. I was very outspoken, very still who exactly I am today. Now, I got the confidence to do music. I couldn't believe it. Little Jeffrey wanted to rap. I wanted to do dance music. I wanted to do hip hop. I wanted to rap. I wanted to be a pop star. 
And who could blame me, right? Hello, I was in the city of angels. So here we are. I'm meeting all these people, meeting musicians. I go to shows all the time. I grew up in Huntington Beach, California. I was at Chain Reaction in Anaheim. I was at the House of Blues. I was at the Whiskey A Go-Go on Sunset, the Roxy, the Key Club. I went to shows all the time. I was a very into the music scene. And through networking, I met producers. I met songwriters. And all of a sudden, I wrote my debut EP called Plastic Surgery slumber party my first song was called we want yes my screen name used to be the c word so on brand i know and of course later in life i legally changed my name at 19 to jeffree star and we never turned back so my debut song comes out very offensive very wild very rappy and it blew up and then i released my second song eyelash curlers and butcher knives What's the difference? That blew up. It was wild. And then all of a sudden, I have an EP worth of stuff. It's called Plastic Surgery Slumber Party. I put it out, and I kind of did it not as a joke, because I was taking it very serious, but I had no idea what was going to happen. I was a working makeup artist. I had been makeup I was 12 years old. So I kind of put my makeup creativity on pause, did some music, and all of a sudden, we're getting emails, phone calls. People wanted to book me. I had no idea what I was doing. Wow. Fast forward to me figuring it out. I'm a boss bitch. We figured it out. All of a sudden, I'm on the road. I'm doing little shows. I'm opening up for this rapper. His name was Mickey Avalon. I'm opening up for Peaches, one of the most iconic underground electro stars. And little Jeffrey Lynn star is an actual musician. Whether people took me serious or not back then, I did. Whether people fully believed in it back then, I did. Was it maybe <gasps> Look, there's Daniel. Oh, that was um, Jeffree Star's good friend that passed away. I think, was it two, three years ago? Aw. Ahead of its time? Mm, I think so. So all of a sudden, success comes very quickly. And I was unsure of what to do next. So I started my own little record label. It was called Popsicle Music. And it was under Warner Brothers. And it was in their umbrella house called Independent Label Group. Let's fast forward to this little guy. This is my second EP. It's called Cupcakes Taste Like Violence. This was very monumental for me and was really special. Oh my God, just looking at this is really wild, you guys. Oh my gosh, this is really special. So this came out and the success kept growing and I really wanted to write a full length album. It was time, it was so important and I really wanted to be a pop star. So I went on the journey of writing my debut album, Beauty Killer. It came out all the way in 2009 it is really special when i'm looking at this it is it was monumental for me now this album features Nicki minaj it features matt skiba of alkaline trio who was in blink 182 it features breathe carolina it features i mean so many producers were on this from shakira's producer to people that have now had grammys it's it's truly it's truly mind-numbing so on some unfortunate circumstances i did not have the big debut that i wanted i was under an umbrella i didn't have the right promotion i didn't have the right management i didn't have the right team to really make this vision come to life i think maybe they wanted it to be like i think they wanted <clears throat> jeffrey to do it himself you know i think they wanted him to be like well you already have a following just announce it and they're gonna buy it and create your own buzz create your own hype but that was like around the time when like it was it started to be pay to play and it started to have more advertising dollars behind certain people. That's just my opinion, right? And so maybe they weren't allocating a, a bigger budget for him to really make the album like a big deal. But in retrospect looking back, like is that album comparable to like Lady Gaga's first album? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Or stuff like that. Is it? I think at the time, maybe he felt it was. But it, it maybe if he would have kept going, the third or fourth album would have been like that really big hit one. But you never know. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. A lot of the internet heard it. Some of these songs had hundreds of thousands. Because let's not forget, there were other artists who started copying Jeffree Star. And they started using the whole pink thing and using things that he was doing. I found that interesting, too of plays and back then you didn't get paid for your streaming we just were happy that people were listening and it was really special i was selling out shows all around the world i played shows in the uk australia all over america and thousands of people were coming they were buying merch they were listening they were singing my words that i had written back to me 
And that was the most special thing about being an artist was to connect with strangers who just understood who I was. So this album did not get the shine that it did. And I think now looking back 15 years later, it definitely needs to have one more moment and one more hurrah. So we thought it would be really special to add three new songs to this. Now, a lot of you may know my MySpace hit single, Beauty Killer, which was of course the title track from the album. I thought it'd be really fun to dive in and kind of re-record it in a country kind of twang. So we re-recorded the song Beauty Killer, and then I wanted to capture wow. that MySpace sound, but make it current. So the other two new songs that I recorded for the limited edition vinyl and CDs and digital, oh baby, there's a lot here. Um, the, the two new songs are really fun. One is really kind of like dance floor to the wall. Um, okay, I have a lot to say. So he's taking the existing album and adding two new songs plus like a remix to one, basically. I thought we were getting a whole new album. Or at least a single by itself. So he's like re-releasing his iconic album with two new songs. I hope it hits. Here we go. And the other one is a very, very hip hop. This is me just dabbling and just dipping my feet into the pink water. I don't know what the future is going to hold, but I'm ready to really get mm -hmm. active and have fun. Can you, you know what it seems like? It seems like Jeffrey's like, if this takes off, I'm going to make more. That's what it seems like. A Jeffree Star concert now? I can actually do everything I ever wanted to do? You never know, y'all. <laughs> so get ready to experience some new music. Does this define exactly who I am as an artist right now? No, it is a bleep in time. I wanted to capture something and have a lot of fun. I'm so fucking excited for people to hear new music. So after this album came out, it was a very wild roller coaster. I didn't get the success that I wanted. I had put blood, sweat, and tears into this project. And then a couple years later, I'm somehow in Atlanta, and Nicki Minaj's manager introduces me to Mr. Akon. Now, a lot of you... Okay, yeah, there's the whole Akon drama. Here we go. You not know, but yes, Nicki Minaj is featured on my debut album. It is a song called Lollipop Luxury. Her verse is actually just next level. It's so fun. And me and her worked on this song prior to really all of her massive success. I think her, her feature with Young Money and Bedrock had just came out. Your Love had dropped and she was just bubbling. And I knew when I heard her mixtape prior to any massive success she had, I knew she was the one. I knew she was going to be next in line. Little did I know it was going to be so monumental and she would change the rap game forever for the females. But baby, we got her on my album and it was really special. She thanked me in her Pink Friday notes when her massive debut album came out, which I thought was so special. And yes, we still show love to each other till this day. So all of a sudden I'm in Atlanta. Nicki Minaj's manager at the time is Deborah Antony. She introduced me to Mr. Akon. And all of a sudden, little Jeffree Star broke and on the verge of not sure what was going to happen i'm in akon's mansion it was wild he signs me as an artist and he's my manager it was a very weird situation looking back i would have done business way different but that's what i want to know how would he would have done it differently so that maybe new people could know but how would jeffree star would have done business differently back then you know, what were the mistakes? Because no one, no one really tells you. Damn, if only we knew. For my life, I got to fly around the world with him. I got to learn so much business. I got to see the music industry behind the scenes in a totally different way with someone that has had so much success, but it wasn't the right time for me. So even though he had signed Lady Gaga and even though he had worked with and signed T-Pain and had had so much success himself, it was the wrong place at the wrong time. And Jeffree Star was not meant to be a pop star at that time. So after a couple years of really trying and making a second album that never came out, I was very frustrated, very depressed, and on the verge of just quitting everything. So what did I do? I followed my gut, and I quit. I fired everyone, the lawyers, the managers, the team. I said goodbye to touring, and I said goodbye to it all. It was devastating, it was heartbreaking, and it was one of the most difficult decisions I have ever made made in my entire life but was it not the best decision in the world so i said goodbye to music 
I said, sayonara. I put out my last song in 2013 called Love to Michael Bay. I was... Well, I love that song. That's, when, that's a great song. Finally, making a sound I was really, really proud of. I was growing and developing as an artist. I was finding my voice. And then all of a sudden, it was all gone. I remember sitting in North Hollywood in that two-bedroom apartment, me and Diva and Diamond just staring out the balcony, wondering, is this all over? Now, my passion for makeup had never dissipated. I did put it on the back burner. So all of a sudden, I'm back to doing makeup. And then social media was morphing and changing and turning into a whole nother monster. My space was fading. Instagram was on the rise. TikTok wasn't invented yet. And YouTube was massive. So little Jeffrey Lynn hopped on YouTube one day and saw a few girls doing makeup tutorials. And boy, did that change me forever. So I think most of you know the journey by now. What happened? I reactivated my YouTube channel. And for almost 10 years, I reviewed makeup. I showed you my relationships. I showed you my wild, rapid success as someone trying to figure it out, learning to be a CEO, and the full trajectory of the growth of my brand. You guys saw it all. We then did two documentaries. The Conspiracy Documentary is one of the most wildest journeys I've ever been on, one of the most proudest of my career. And it was just unreal. We sold the most eyeshadow palettes in history, in the beauty world, in an hour. It was monumental. Over a million units. I will never forget that day. Now, the beauty community on... I mean, I mean it was. And if you look at that documentary, Rich Lux was like in every episode. That was crazy. Good times. Uh, definitely disintegrated, and I lost my passion for beauty. I stopped reviewing makeup for a while. I kind of just felt out of place, and I did go to other apps. I went to TikTok. I really have just been having the best time over there reviewing makeup. And human beings started to digest content different. All of a sudden, even though a lot of my hardcore watchers love a nice, long foundation video, 30-minute review, the viewers were falling for all of the beauty creators, not just me. People were going to TikTok. They were really focusing on Instagram. And YouTube for Beauty had just shifted, and I lost my spark. So now, baby, we are fully back in business. And right now, I would love to show you a little debut makeup collection that we have been working on. Now, the anniversary of the music, it's not complicated, but it's broken down in two parts. So, yes, there is Beauty Killer, the 15th anniversary CD. Oh, look, we got new artwork. Jeffree Star, the long hair with devil horns. Okay. Final with a brand new cover. There. Well, there's so many different versions of the... Also a digital EP called a Lollipop Killer, and there's a mini eyeshadow palette! Oh, uh, whoa. We are one of the coolest, dopest, weirdest makeup brands on the planet. So of course, we had to do a little makeup collection with this celebration. Now, the Lollipop Killer palette, she's a nine fan, she's mini, and of course, it has the album cover on it! Oh my wow, God. Wow, look at that, guys, look at that. You guys, is this lollipop killer? Uh, next level. This is the album cover for lollipop killer beauty killer 15th anniversary re release. Okay, looks like we have two lippies and a liquid blush. Now let's open up Miss Lollipop Killer Mini Palette. Yes. Ooh. Look at her, y'all. She is very bright. She is very obnoxious. It's giving my space. All right, so we got some pinks, uh, a little red, a little smoky eye moment there. All right, cute. Scene, makeup colors, very bright, very wow, and very. Let me see. I like that one. One. To uh, for me, I would actually be able to use. Let me see, one, two, maybe like four, one, two, three, four, four, five, maybe. Killer. Now here it is in all this glory. Nine beautiful shades that definitely represent the MySpace and Jeffree Star. It's yeah. very pink, very goth, and very bright, and very old school Jeffree Star. Back then, there wasn't a billion eyeshadow colors. There was only a couple brands really killing it. And then I came in the game. Hi. Yes, sir. <laughs> and the shades are all named after a beauty killer. The album, the songs, the lyrics. It is a very on brand and is a very stunning. So hi, how are ya?
Now, the palette is really special because this is going to coincide with the music. But of course, there has to be a couple lipsticks and we even made a liquid blush. Now, my famous velour liquid lipstick is what catapulted my brand to the next level. It is our very first product we ever launched. So, of course, we have to do a couple new shades for this collection. One is called a lollipop killer and the other one is called a strawberry youth. They are very bright, very me. And I am wearing a lollipop killer right now with a very new lip liner coming out next year. Here is Strawberry Youth, and here is a lollipop killer. Now, my Magic Candy liquid blush is very famous. We have over 20 shades, the most out of any brand in America. So, of course, Miss Lollipop Luxury liquid blush, named after me and Nicki Minaj's famous song, Yes Sir, Yes Ma'am. Here she is. It is a very bubblegum, bright coral it looks like, shade. It looks, she really is that. It almost looks metallic a little bit from the packaging. Girl, and if you've never used my liquid blushes, a little goes oh, a long whoa. way. Yep. So this entire mini little makeup collection, plus all the new music, it's available for pre-order right now. We have four different vinyl variants. We have a limited edition CD. And baby, we have a digital EP as well. We really went all out. So everything is available to pre-order right now. It all launches September 20th. And just like the old days, everything is linked down below. Oh my God. I really missed it here. Wow. I would love to end this video with giving you guys a little sneak peek of some new music. Hi, hello. So here is a little clip of something new. Okay, here we go, guys. Here we go, guys. We got a minute left in this video and he's gonna give us a sneak peek to his new song. Ooh, hold on. It says pre order the vinyl, merch, and cosmetics at jeffreestarcosmetics.com. Okay, here we go. Okay. I'm shook. Let me see. Hold on. Is hold on. Before I play the rest of the song, I just want to make sure um you know like copyright and things like that. So I'm on iTunes, right? <coughs> By type in Jeffrey Star, excuse me. <clears throat> so it's not on here yet. It's not on it's not on iTunes yet. Not that I know of. I'm looking through iTunes. It's not on iTunes yet. Okay, here we go. Self-made CEO, filthy rich, still a hoe. MySpace icon, Forbes list, cry on internet celebrity, coined it all wannabes. High heels and never trip, swallow, never spit. Hi, how are ya? so much for the warm welcome back i cannot believe that i am coming back as a musician so wow okay guys let me know what you think about that drama in the comments down below i'm excited the music hey the, the music sound good i could definitely see myself hearing it at the club it definitely is giving edm i like that and i can't wait to see what else happens i hope we get more music honestly but anyways doesn't matter what i think about it let me know what you guys think about that drama in the comments down below this is rich Lux with the hottest news on youtube bye now how do i turn this off okay i found it okay bye <laughs>